what the, the, the powerful interests want most is the children. You know, a lot yeah. of their, their programs are sort of 2035, 2050. They want um, today's preschool children. Um, they want them to not to know light, any kind of life the way we knew it. No freedoms. They don't want those children to understand anything of what a, sort of a free, autonomous, artistic, creative life would be. And there, there's a very, um, uh, you know, upsetting image of, I think it's a company actually in the UK, I think it's near Glastonbury actually, um, that they're selling, they're putting virtual reality headsets on preschoolers, yeah. you know, essentially stealing the, the, the innate senses of these like three-year-olds and four-year-olds um, right there, like in their classroom setting, they're like grouped, there's more like eight preschool kids with these VR, these huge clunky things in their faces. And so, you know, they're grooming this young generation. I mean, for me, you know, I'm in my early fifties, so that I'm like, I'm, you know, that <laughs> I'm not, not worthless to them. They're, they, you know, they want to get rid of us as soon as possible, I'm sure, and move on to the, yeah. the nice shapeable commodities that are coming up. Mm-hmm. But I think that is why those of us who are in positions of, um, speaking out need to because if we don't speak out surely that those children are not in a position to protect themselves and that even also with the bioengineering the idea of a non-synthetically managed human life could possibly be eliminated you know in a generation or so you know the the idea of natural birth you know of na- of of humans conceived outside of technological systems and that's a pretty intense and terrifying prospect and i guess my question wondering like within the conversation around reproductive justice and you know bodily choice and autonomy it it frustrates me that those communities are not attuned to what's actually happening Mm -hmm. Um, because clearly controlling reproduction and controlling family life are um central to this project advancing yeah and it's, it's funny that we're really seeing um the kind of brave new world type scenario manifesting, you know, and, and you know, Huxley was, you know, very much in that world, you know, of these, of the kind of, I suppose what we call now, I would say the predatory, parasitical kind of upper class. Uh, and, and so he was well aware, you know, where they wanted this agenda to go. So people say, well, brave new world, you know, oh, a bit sci-fi, but it, it was, it was a projection of what he knew from the connections he had to where he could logically see their system going. And in fact, it's quite accurate, you know, because we have got to the point, haven't we, where we've got these now, these prototype external wombs where we can potentially grow a human being. Um, We can obviously create the embryos, you know, outside of the body already, but we can grow the fetus in these external wombs and that they cut out that sacred part of, you know, the reproductive system, you know, where there's any sense of, of, of love in the creation of that child and also no being inside the mother you know and obviously the child develops hearing we know now of course don't we that the the, the developing baby is hearing and sensing inside the womb and that's part of the development of a of a normal healthy functional human being so again we're taking away a whole key stage of development and kind of robotizing 